Hello and welcome to the garden. It's a pretty glorious day today. The sun is out and that makes a pleasant change. It's actually quite toasty here in the greenhouse. And I'm going to get on with one of our early sowings. So the start of our growing year is usually the same. We, we begin, of course, with the onions, those that we're growing from seed. And then not long after, we follow with the chilies, peppers and aubergines. And then our next sowing will be some brassicas. So sort of the first half of February, I like to get an early sowing of the brassicas made. So with my brassicas, I like to grow those on to reasonable sized plants before I get them in the ground. So it's quite easy then to start these quite early. They're not going to go outdoors for quite a while yet. And I will, I will put these into at least three inch pots and maybe a bit bigger than that grow them onto nice size plants before I set them out in the beds. I feel that way they are much less likely to be bothered by pests. One marauding slug will very quickly take out an entire bed full of small seedlings, whereas a larger plant, it'll have a nibble, but it's less likely to wipe it out. And I much prefer to grow these on in pots for a while before setting them out. And if you've got club root in the ground, we're fortunate we don't we don't have any club root here. But if you do have club root in the ground, one of the measures you can take to get around that is to grow them on to a good size before putting them out. They, they're a lot less susceptible then. So on to varieties. And, and the, the two things that we're most keen on in this sowing are the summer cabbages and the kales. I mean, the kales are such great value plants. They go on cropping for month after month. We've still got some Tuscan kale, the, the Cavolo Nero that we sowed round about this time last year. It's not at its best now. We've, we've been cropping it through the winter and, and some things upset the top of the plant the, the, where the new leaves are coming. So I think they've pretty much had it now. I would have expected them to go on for a bit longer. I can't imagine they got bothered by the cold. I mean, they're pretty, they're pretty tough old plants. They'll sit happily through the heat of summer and the cold of winter. But anyway, they're, they're looking ragged now. So I need to get some new ones on the go. So to start with my, perhaps my favorite all round cabbage, Copenhagen market. So this one is, fairly quick growing it is compact i can get three across a, a four foot bed here without too much trouble very reliable and a good quality cabbage i really do like that one um, and then i'm going back to one that i haven't grown for a few years this one is filled kraut this is a bit of a monster i certainly won't be getting three across the bed there two at the at the most and I might try and find somewhere in one of the borders to pop these where I can give them plenty of space because potentially this makes a really enormous cabbage. It's a German variety. It's a classic variety for uh, kraut salad or, or um, sauerkraut, of course. If you're into that sort of thing, I will probably use this for uh, a kraut salad rather than um, sauerkraut. But yeah, that's a really great cabbage, potentially. Um, then the kales. I've got a couple of other varieties I might start later in the year, but I want to get some of the Tuscan black kale started. And then I've got one that I haven't grown before. It's Vates Blue Curled, and I'll be interested to see how that one comes out. It's probably not too dissimilar from the Dwarf Green Curled that I grow regularly. Then I've got two that I'm a little less interested in. This, these aren't such an important crop here. I've got some calabrese and I've got some cauliflower all year round. Then it's probably a little early for these, but I've got space in the cell tray. I'm going to start these in. So I'm going to start some kohlrabi, white Vienna. And then I've got one of the oriental greens. Now, most of the Oriental greens, I think, 
are better sown in the latter half of the year, certainly past midsummer and maybe towards the end of summer. They don't really like warm conditions, so certainly I wouldn't start them late spring or early summer. In all likelihood, they would perform quite poorly, run to seed very quickly and be scrappy plants. So they, they, they're much better if left to the cool end of the year. But there are a couple that work okay more or less year round. One of them is Mizuna and I've, I've still got quite a lot of Mizuna in the greenhouse. So that's been overwintering. We've been cropping that regularly. It overwinters really well. It's surprising just how much that one will grow all the way through the winter. Another one that can be sown more or less year round is Komatsuna. It's a little less bothered by warm conditions. I'm not going to sow it year round, but I am going to make this one early sowing. Don't need too many plants, but I will give that a try and, and see how that does. Um, something else that is probably best kept to the end of the year and that's Chima di Rapa. So all the things I mentioned so far I'm going to start them in a cell tray but I'm actually going to sew direct in the cold frames. Uh, I've got a little thermometer there before I sew I will double check the soil temperature but I did it more or less this time last year. I think maybe I'm a week earlier this year but it was colder last year so I'm, I'm, I'm sure conditions are, are roughly the same. So Chima di Rapa that is probably best left till the latter half of the year again doesn't want too hot conditions I don't think it's the best sort of thing to grow through the summer but you can get away with an early sowing if you pick one of the fast maturing varieties so there are some sort of local or named varieties but most of the time they've they're just known by a number and 40 or 90 120 and, and so on and that is an indicator of time to maturity now of course at this time of year conditions are pretty cool even in the cold frame so growth will be a little bit slower but i've got one of the 40 day crops here and that should mature towards the end of April if I get it going now. Certainly I would expect to clear that out in the first week or two of May just in time to get the melons in the cold frames. So I tried this for the first time last year and the timing worked out great. Germination was fine even, even now at the start of February in the cold frames they germinated well and reasonably quickly. All of the brassica seeds, they will germinate quite happily at fairly low temperatures. So the optimal germination might be at, under warmer conditions, but they'll start to germinate reasonably from five to 10 degrees. And when you're at 10 degrees and above, then they're gonna do reasonably well. So. I'm going to check the temperature and so long as we're, it's not too bad in there I'm going to start some Chima de Rapa and maybe a few radish directly in the cold frame. So the first job some potting mix and then I'm going to sow all of the others in this cell tray. So this is one of the pretty small trays and they're okay. I'm, I'm not so keen on them there's not a huge amount of soil in a in a cell this size but I think they will be absolutely fine for starting these brassicas so long as I move them on in good order so I will move them on from these cells into at least a three inch pot if not not something a bit bigger maybe a four inch pot um, and I will have to do that before they get bound up in these little cells but they're not bad so long as you don't leave them there too long. So first to some sewing mix, I've got some rehydrated coir here. I quite like that stuff. And then I've got some sieved multi-purpose compost. This one is absolutely awful. It's still full of junk. 
stuff that will go through the sieve and I really don't like the texture. I don't know what's in this, but there's really nothing to it. I don't think it holds water very well. It's that that is dreadful. And I mean, I sieved out a massive amount of junk out of this already, but not happy with that. But the combination will work okay. And the, and the final ingredient, a little bit of vermiculite. Doesn't need to be too much. I'll just give that a quick mix. Okay, so I'm just going to fill this tray. I'm not going to press this down too much at this stage, but I, I do want to make sure those cells are properly filled because there's not a lot of soil in there. Right, now I want to give that a good soaking. Right, and now I'll do the usual trick, just dimple the surface of these, just to make a little bit of room for the seed. And it helps to keep the seed in the center of the cell. It's not that critical, but it's how I like to do it. So for most of these, I only really want three plants, maybe four of the filter kraut at most. Um, I will sow though six of these cells for most of these and that gives me some spares. I like to have spares at every stage. I have spares at this stage. I will have some spares hopefully when I pot them on and, and I'll keep those around for at least a week or two after the plants go into the ground and if I've got spares at every stage, then I'm happy. If something happens to one of the plants, I've got something I can replace it with. So, all right, first up is Copenhagen Market. And I just want to tap out two or three seeds in each, each one of these cells. And then I will thin to a single seedling, of course. Um, this is not fresh seed, but brassica seed should keep reasonably well. I've had trouble lately with germination of stuff, but not with not with brassicas. And now on to the filter kraut. Now the Tuscan Kale. Now to the Vates Blue Curled. And the Color Brazing. And finally, the cauliflower all year round. Slight technical glitch there. My camera is misbehaving. For some reason it didn't save that last segment, but never mind. I've just finished off this tray with two rows of the kohlrabi and two of the komatsuna. I could use a little more of those plants and of course they don't take up quite as much space in the bed as the others do so that should be fine hopefully the komatsuna really is komatsuna this time the mizuna i've got growing in the greenhouse has been cropping really well for us but that was supposed to be komatsuna that packet of seed was mislabeled i got these from a different company so i'm hoping these are the correct item 
So I could leave these on the bench in an unheated propagator, but one of these propagators here is only on at a very low level. I think I've got it on sort of 12 degrees, something like that, just to keep like a minimum nighttime temperature in there. Obviously the, the one I've got the peppers and chilies in, that one is a lot warmer, at least during the day. So th these don't need to be in there, but I will pop these in to the, the cool propagator and they'll be perfectly happy in there. And hopefully in not too long a time, we'll see some action here. I will just have to come through and very carefully pinch out any of the excess seedlings. So I'll pop this in the propagator and then we'll take a look at the temperature in the cold frame, see whether it's fit to sow. So the last thing this frame had were some melons and it looks like I didn't even clear the plants out. That's really quite bad. There's a little bit of weed in here, but not much because I've got some membrane here. I shall roll that up, pull the weeds out. Uh, what's the temperature? Well, that's not too bad. I'll see if I can get a close up of that. I don't know how well that will show up on the camera, but we're just shy of 10 degrees there. Um, I think higher than nine at least. Uh, that's not too bad. Obviously that's not a particularly high temperature for the soil, but it is the sort of temperature where things will start to germinate reasonably well if you're careful about what you put in. So the brassicas, I think, will germinate all right in there. So I'm gonna get, I think, maybe four rows of Chima de Rapa across this bed. And I'll probably put a little row of radish across the front. So the Chima de Rapa, it's not gonna make particularly big plants. The 40 day variety doesn't. Um, I've got two frames that aren't in use. The others have all got something in. I've got chicory in one of them that's overwintered. I've got strawberries in one of the frames. Then I've got winter lettuce and tatsoy in another. So I've got two frames spare. I'm going to plant up both today. And yeah, hopefully towards the end of April, we will be able to take a harvest off of these. And yeah, that's that's quite welcome then, some nice fresh greens. And, and I love Chima de Rapa. Slight bitter taste, but absolutely delicious. just fold that weed membrane out of the way and leave it there because I'm going to need that again as soon as I plant this with the melon so I'm just going to take a little look at this soil and actually it's in pretty good condition we added a lot of compost in here last season and I don't think I'm going to add any more compost yet I might put some possibly locally maybe fork in some horse compost where I'm going to plant the melons and maybe some other feed but I don't know I think I think this is fine as it is what I will do though maybe add a sprinkling of pelleted chicken manure and just rake that in
other brassicas like this stuff, of course. Lots of nitrogen in it. One, two. I think I think I can squeeze in four rows of the plants across here. The uh, slower growing varieties could use a bit of space, but the, these, the, the plants really don't get that big, even if you give them plenty of room. So I think I'll get four rows of the Chima Durapa and a little bit of radish at the front. I'll just scratch out a, an approximate drill here with the Hori Hori. So I don't want to sow these too thickly, otherwise I'm just going to have to spend a lot of time thinning out. Now this isn't fresh seed so there might be a slight decline in germination rate and of course it is pretty cold right now even though this soil temperature is okay to sow in it's not it's not exactly hot in here so even in the in the cold frame so any sowing at this time of year it's a little bit speculative but even so, I don't want to do too much thinning, so I will attempt to sow these fairly thinly in here. I will get a watering can out and just give that a soak. I mean the soil's not dry in here but it's not it's not really wet either and I'd like to just make sure those seeds get properly moistened. Right on the end here, I'm going to squeeze in a few of these French breakfast. And I've grown all sorts of radish. We're not that mad about the radish here, actually, but I like them from time to time. But whatever I've grown, I always end up coming back to French breakfast. Now I want to be sparing with these, this is fresh seed, I don't want too many radish here, I might try and get a couple of inches between seed, that will be fine. And they will grow happily in a little clump but th this will be plenty for our purposes and again if I can avoid thinning I will be happy. Even in these cold temperatures, I expect this to germinate reasonably well. Radish is a pretty reliable cold weather crop. You can start that outdoors pretty early under a under a cloche or certainly in a frame. That'll be fine. Right, that is done. So that's the first frame done up. I will sew the second frame exactly the same way and the only thing I've got to do then is 
give these lights a bit of a scrub here because they do have a fair amount of algae and dirt on them from the previous season so I, I need to give these a really good clean but apart from that this job is done and hopefully if we don't get some really cold weather hopefully these will germinate successfully and we'll get that crop of Chima de Rapa out of here just in time for the melons as we did last year but anyway that is all for this video thanks ever so much for watching and bye for now